Good morning, folks. We've got seismicity, tropical storms, space dust, atmospheric science, and space weather to discuss today. The latter includes a look back at the May superstorm and, of course, what's been happening the last 24 hours on our star. We begin there where solar flaring has died back down. Despite the plethora of sunspots, they have produced only smaller and impulsive M-class flares, and those were absent for most of the last day. The sunspots are beginning to depart while new ones emerge. You can see how the sea of spots is beginning to turn towards the right, towards the far side. Most of them are no longer in Earth-facing position, while on the left we see new sunspots coming over the limit to view. We'll be monitoring all of these in the days ahead. Top seismic event of the last day, last several days actually, struck the low velocity zone beneath Tonga, magnitude 6.9 and a smaller 6-pointer as well. Luckily, this region handles bigger quakes well, especially if they are that deep, where surface shaking is minimized. Remember, we have those three systems churning in the Pacific. The first one began impacting Hawaii about 36 hours ago and is slipping past it now. The two others, Gilma and Hector, are on a westward track towards Hawaii as well, and we'll be keeping an eye on those in the days ahead, as they hopefully lose strength as they are forecast to do. First up in the articles today is this. We recently saw a paper backtracking on ice loss risk from Antarctica. This one backtracks on flood risk. Turns out the climate models vastly overestimate the frequency and intensity of major floods that will be caused by climate change. That's good news for those who have been touting the problems of climate models. The bad news is that the weakening of Earth's magnetic field will end up causing them anyway. Up next, we're seeing an excellent study on dust in the inner solar system from Parker in the Solar Orbiter. We have previously seen studies showing there is more dust than expected from the solar corona out past Pluto. And here, they find that some of the dust cannot be explained by their circular bound orbit models. Something else is at play, and while they do make some guesses, they never discuss the possibility of extra input from galactic sources. Last but not least, we have a paper suggesting that the May solar superstorm magnitude was a once every 12 year event. The problem is that the auroral and ionospheric impacts were unprecedented, breaking marks not seen before, and yet the solar eruptions that caused them were relatively normal events seen regularly every solar cycle. It's a roundabout way of saying this event was special, and once again I'll remind you, it should not have been. Earth's weakening magnetic field let it have stronger effects than it should have had. Folks, as many of you know, Observer Ranch is complete. The RV campground and education center is about to open. We have an open house the last two days of the month, and you can get your tickets at the link below. We'd love to see you out there, and if you can't make the grand opening, General Reservation System goes online today. Link below to tickets. More information at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.